but that's the danger you know of not having a producer is that you can end up end up selling your house <laughs> <laughs> And welcome to the sit down where we have conversations with creators from across this beautiful motherland of ours. My name is Marco Mboy, a filmmaker and an all round story lover. And today we are sitting down with Enver Samuel, who's a producer, director from South Africa. He has done it all. We're talking about MasterChef South Africa. We're talking about ACA Go Talent. We're talking about The Bachelorette. And now he's making even more powerful, powerful documentaries. And he's here to talk about it all. So sit down and settle in. That was a, a major shock to have someone shot like that and in such a cowardly manner. France has been shocked, really shocked. Nancy must have been on to something. To assassinate an AIDS person in, in a foreign country is a very big decision. Uh, for this case, they could do it in Africa, and they did it quite a lot. Pourquoi on l'a tué elle? Why? Good. Uh, thank you so much for joining us again for this section. So to start us off, um, how did you end up learning about this story? Um, what was the beginning of the journey towards this? Yeah? So, murder in Paris. Um, the journey or the beginning is, is I would call it fate. fate. Um, sometimes faith plays an important part in your life. Um, I was at a documentary festival in Switzerland called Visions de Rio. And um, at the festival, I bumped into um, Dalcy September. Dalcy September is the main protagonist of the documentary. She was the person killed in France. Um, I met a relative of hers, of hers in Switzerland at this documentary festival. And I was telling him, he told me that he'd watched the documentary I made on Ahmed Timol, the person thrown out of the 10th floor. Mm. And, and so he says, but why don't you do something on my relative? And I said, tell me more. Mm. And he told me and I said, this story sounds amazing. And he said, when you get back to South Africa, contact um, the family spokesperson who lives in Cape Town and uh, see how it goes from there. And I got back uh, after the festival contacted the family member, told them that I did, did the Timor story and I would like to do the Dalsy September story. And um, that's how it was born. That's how it started, by complete chance, com complete fate. And having come from the Timor story and just from your, I guess, vast experience as well, when you're tackling a story or a film that is, um, I don't know if this is the right word, from the past, <laughs> that's the... I mean, how do you approach something that is historical? How do you, where do you begin in your, it's not like you're going to meet the person now or, you know, it's happening now. You have to, what's the process of creating or handling such projects? How do you go about it? So, I mean, this was obviously going to be very tricky because it was a 30 year old assassination uh, that happened 30 years ago. So, so in my, in my concept, and obviously I had to think about it and, and then, then it came to the stage where I, where I had to conceptualize the documentary in my mind. It's a 30 year old story, but how do I bring it to contemporary? How do I bring it to now? Um, because, because I don't want it just to be a history lesson, you know? So, so I, I, in my research, and this is critically important when you're doing documentaries like this, is to, is to really jump into the research like like really jump into it and and do proper proper research and during my research i discovered there was this dutch journalist that um had a was also having a 30-year quest to find out who were the killers of dalcy september so she was trying to write a book about the killing and um you know i i i got hold of her and Again, like fate, she, it wasn't that I had to go from South Africa to Holland. She was actually living in South Africa. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
So, so I contacted her and I told her about my idea and she was all for it. Tell Darcy's story, but, but tell it through Evelyn's eyes. And then you bring it to the present. And it's not just a history lesson. And a history lesson, you can put your uh, half of your audience to sleep. You know, um, the the other half that's interested because they they know about the ANC, they might they might watch, but but you lose a big chance. Um, uh, what's the big? You big? You lose a big part of your audience yeah. um, when you make it a history lesson. And so I made it more like an investigative um, um, drama than than a history piece. Yeah, and you have you've done the research. The universe has been good to you. The the pieces are falling in in some way, but what you have now is a ton of information <laughs> to sift through. How how do you now take all this potential potential information and say, okay, this is worth investing the next? I don't know how long you've been filming it. But this is what I invest in the next couple of months or years into it. There's a really important decision there. And how do you know this is the right thing to do and this is the right way to go? Um, first of all, you, you can, you know, the internet is a marvelous creation. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we are born at the, we are, we are living at the right time of this world. <laughs> so, I was able to do a lot of the research on the internet. The, the amount of articles, and um, correspondence that I was able to get out of the internet on the killing and the assassination of Dalsy September was enormous. And then I went to libraries and I got books and I read a lot of books, I bought books. Um, then I went to universities that have archive, you know, in terms of photographs. Um, the University of Fort Hare in the Eastern Cape has, has actually has Dalsy's archive that was sent from France after she was killed was sent to be stored so i went and spent a week there you know going through that archive reading through a correspondence and diaries and photographs um and then in terms of how you choose what you want to focus on um, i chose that i want to focus on the journalist and her quest so it's a quest to find dalcy's killers and i tell it through her eyes so that was my focus and but at the same time you got to give the family an opportunity to say how the, the death is kill, uh, has affected them um we look at issues of patriarchy within the nc we look at the arms deal of today and link it to the arms deal she was investigating you know so there are all these other areas we explore but um from the from the wealth of um of uh, research and archive you have to make critical decisions on what areas you want to focus on and what areas you think um, should be left because you can't put everything in uh, probably at this point the i, I would imagine there was some the, the spirit was already welcoming but in situations where you're dealing with um, a family and it's a long uh, a relative who suffered injustice how do you get them to buy in to you believing that you will be able to um, almost find it's almost it's not justice but almost speak for them in a way that no one else could speak how do you convince them that they can trust you to take up that burden through yes so that's the the hard part because like there's no way i can't really tell you if you want to go and do it I can't take, I can't like give you a, okay, go read this book. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. Um, you know, so, so I think at the end of the day, it is how you connect with that family, how you portray what you want to do. And, and it's that connection you develop with them. Once they see that, that, they, that you have a bigger picture in mind in terms of wanting to tell the story and that's your focus. I think they buy into it because both with the Timor and, and September, I had to talk to them and I had to convince them. And I think they they bought into it, into my vision. So I guess then from their point of view, them looking at me, they said, at some point they said, yes, we can trust him. 
because that's what it has boils down to is that the family has to trust you to be able to tell their story and their their loved one story um in a manner befitting that person yeah and you see with this project you had um, the luxury and beauty of having all this archival material um so did it imply that for you that it's almost as if post production had to start uh, maybe i'm assuming before the actual filming to try and piece all these things together or was it that you collected everything then said okay the normal way this is production now let us go shoot was there a collision of uh, this aspects of it um not really so so how how actually the 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 production started was that my hand was forced so in 2018 in march was the 30th um commemoration 30th anniversary commemoration of a death of a killing from 1988 to 2018 and in paris i got noticed that there was going to be a one week celebration of dalcy's life in paris nothing in south africa and um i had just started a new job with my kitchen rules um a, an australian reality show but a south african version and i always wanted to do it because i was then going to complete the big big four reality shows mm-hmm. and uh, yeah so so i was five, it's a five month contract and i was three weeks into it and i heard about the the commemoration i went to them producers told them i'm going to be abandoning them to up the contract and and took a crew to paris to go and shoot uh this one week uh, commemoration of dalcy's life so i i i i before we did anything i went and and shot so first was family's buying and then yeah. then my hand was forced to go and shoot because i knew if we don't go there i'm going to miss a golden opportunity because who was coming to this uh, 30th anniversary people that worked with her in the ANC office people that knew her you know and 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 that's what happened in this one week we got the best footage that you could believe so we had actually shot first um just those key um interviews and shots of paris and then and then I started building everything around that the archive came later but the archive there was so much archive you just knew exactly where to place it you know um yeah how do you is funding for something like this uh, i know at least south africa has form of some form of a structure compared to other african countries but how how did you go about um getting at least something to keep to kick start this process yeah well i i mean i attacked the funding process quite rigorously because i knew that's the only way i'm going to be able to make it is if i get funding um even though i'd made that initial sacrifice so so unfortunately in south africa we do have the institutions um to assist like our national film and video foundation kauteng film commission you know so i applied to them and they all jumped in on board um and then you know others organizations also like the nelson mandela foundation assisted um the organization that used to work for in england assisted um so in the end i was able to get um the correct budget to tell the story properly and when you when you're cutting such a long form documentary with that process is it the fact that you take a break from it that allows you to come back and see a weakness in it and does that mean you have to go back and start filming again how do you know at what point should i stop because you can keep doing this for a long long time so so yes that that when you're not having the when you have the luxury of not having to like edit it okay you've got 30 days you got to edit it and deliver it then 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 you do have that luxury of changing and that's what we're doing a lot we because we're stopping and starting you come back to it then you say okay maybe we should change this maybe we should change that because we were stopping and starting but um you know as you i saw as the process moved on the changes were becoming little and little and little and then when you know you you've done the littlest change 
you know you're near the end and and that's what was happening and then and then and then when we but then there's a point now okay the broadcast is on the 21st of march on human rights day because we 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 negotiated that with the SABC to show it on a significant day she fought for our human rights let's broadcast it on human rights day um then you know okay okay i've got it delivered because because yeah, there's the 21st exactly. of march yeah. so so but but at the same time of doing it this way during the editing process there were there were there were times there were the opportunities when you're saying okay but we need this cutaway and we need that cutaway and i was still doing that right up to the end getting cutaways because i had the luxury of um you know we weren't delivering like immediately so so sometimes i would go go and get some cutaways because um i felt it needed a certain cutaway you know so so that's the luxury of editing at a different pace when you stop when you start and you mm. you know you, you can do that and and how do you keep being the producer and the director you yeah. know how do you attain the antagonistic nature of those two positions that essentially allow it's almost part of the creative force around it because there's always some form of tension between a producer and a director but when you're both how do you manage that without giving in to the director's needs without the producer stepping in and saying is this really necessary you know, how how do you counter those two aspects between yourself well it's it's a lousy position to be in because what it means is that you're working 20 hours a day and um financially you're also not looking after yourself because you there's no one you know to say hey hang on you know that that footage from Ina in France at 19 euros a second and you want 20 minutes of it <laughs> and the director saying that my director he is saying no i'm going to do it because i want it you know <laughs> and so so it's not the ideal position to be in but but for me um i was prepared to do it so so i i didn't mind doing it you know um i didn't mind not having that producer's hat that was telling me no you have to control yourself and do this and that but that's the danger you know not having a producer that you can end up end up selling your house <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, surely yes, yes, yes you can. <laughs> I mean you'll have a film. I mean that's Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how is it like and I, and I guess for me this is just wrapping up this conversation. How is it like with the family? How many times did you have to show them edits and draft cuts and now what level of influence do they end up having over the edit yes fortunately for me um the family was very hands off they didn't insist on seeing rough cuts and you know they i think they bought into my vision the fact that i kept them abreast of things and constantly let them know what was happening i think that worked in my favor but i never had to really you know they didn't have the input in terms of controlling so so when i was close to my final cut but not the final cut i showed them at the cut and they were they were so impressed they were they were crying you know they were emotional yeah um it's important to keep them in the loop but you shouldn't hand over control because because then uh, you're going into dark or murky waters because at the end of the day it's your vision um you know so so i i think i was fortunate that i had a family that was not not um too pedantic and too particular about about um see wanting to see every process so i i guess i was lucky but like i said the fact that i was informing them maybe they realized okay but he knows what he's doing and he is going to do a good job all right thank you so much i appreciate your time that was quite um 
an interesting conversation on just the madness of being producer, director, and long form documentaries. Uh, we appreciate your time for taking that and you know, sharing it. And if someone had a question um, towards, you know, about producing, about directing, is there a way they could reach you? Are you on the socials? Yeah. Yes. Um, you, you can reach out to me. Can I give you my email address? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So it's it's E for elephant, M for Mary, S yeah. for sugar, EMS, at yeah. EJ, like your EJ button, EJECT. Dot co dot za. But to find out more about the documentary Murder in Paris, uh, just go to murderinparis.com. There's a lot of information about the documentary there. All right, super. Thank you so much and thank you for taking your time with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Keep well. All right, have a nice day. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.